The president's clear strategy to motivate Republicans to the polls next week is to go hard on immigration. But not all Republicans are buying into his plan to nix birthright citizenship, including my next guest. Joining me now is Republican Congressman Carlos Curbelo uh, of Florida, the Miami, Miami area. Congressman, thanks very much for taking the time this morning. Jim, good morning. It's good to be with you. Thank you. Uh, let me start here. You, as a Republican, uh, a rare voice contradicting the president very directly on birthright citizenship. Uh, what is your mes message to the president on this? My message to the president is the same message we had for the past president. You cannot change laws. You certainly cannot change the Constitution by executive order. Uh, if the president wants to have a debate about this issue, if the president wants to point out some abuses uh, in this area, that's okay, and that's something we can have a discussion about. But the president alone cannot change this policy, and it is law, and it is protected in the Constitution uh, that those of us who are born in this country are citizens of this country, and that's it. There's nothing more to discuss for now. Now, uh, the president has claimed that his White House counsel uh, has advised him that he does have the right to do this. Not clear who he's referring to since Don McGahn is already on his way out and he has not been replaced by his replacement yet. But do you suspect that this is just political performance art on the part of the president, days to an election to raise this, where, where even the president himself does not actually believe he has this capability? It's possible, but here's what I have to say to Republicans. Uh, they would be wrong and hypocritical if they didn't call this president out on this issue the same way they used to criticize uh, President Obama when he used to uh, draft executive orders and sign them uh, even though they contradicted existing laws. Uh, we have to be consistent. We have to be honest. And I think that's the broader point about uh, what we need in our politics today. Most Americans, believe it or not, are middle, middle of the road. You wouldn't believe it from watching some of these rallies on either side. And most Americans want uh, the country, the politicians, to figure out issues like immigration. And we know that if we're going to figure it out, we need to compromise. We need more border security. We also need a path to citizenship for dreamers, young immigrants brought to our country as children. This is what most people in our country crave for. And regrettably, it's not what our political system is yielding. I think we need fewer rallies and more conversations, more dialogue in this country to tackle and address the big issues, the challenges that face us. Let me ask you this. You're aware of this ad that is now running. We're not going to play it again because we don't want to give it more oxygen than it deserves. And in fact, it's based in part on a falsehood because this, uh, this immigrant criminal was actually deported. But, but I want to ask you this. In your view, is the ad itself, is it racist? Is it bigoted in the way that it appears intended to portray uh, people of Latino origin? I haven't seen the ad, but I can tell you that it's definitely part of a divide and conquer strategy that a lot of politicians, including the president, have used successfully in the past. I hope this doesn't work. I hope that type of strategy starts failing in our country. But that's up to the American people. I think Americans have to go out and vote for the best candidate in every race, for people who are going to bring this country together, help heal our politics. If we continue getting divided, if our politics continues growing more and more violent, our democracy is going to be at real risk. And look, Jim, my parents came from a country where politics became violent. And they lost their democracy. They lost their country. And they haven't been able to go back to their country for 60 years. Now, I'm not saying that we're at that level of risk here. But if we keep walking down this path where we portray everyone uh, else in our country as a threat, as the enemy, whether it's members of the news media or people who disagree with us, uh, I don't know who's going to win elections, but I know that eventually we will all lose. Part of the president's uh, broader fear strategy is mobilizing thousands of troops to go to the U.S.-Mexico border to respond to a caravan of migrants. Uh, and we've been following the math here. The president now said 15,000 yesterday, which will mean that not only will there be many times more U.S. troops at the border than there are in Iraq today to fight ISIS, but even more than in Afghanistan to fight the Taliban, to fight, to fight Al Qaeda. Do, do you believe that is a smart allocation uh, of, of the precious resource of, of the U.S. military? That's clearly an overreaction. 
And uh, while I think uh, obviously some on, on the far right and, and the president himself are trying to uh, draw a lot of attention to this issue of this caravan, I think also reasonable people can say uh, we should uh, have a border that uh, is protected, uh, that is enforced. Uh, the United States has the same right as any other country in the world to know who's coming in and who's leaving our country and to demand that people who are coming here are doing so legally. So it's but a shame. Need, this, but do you the, need 15,000 U.S. No, military I, on no, the border, so. plus 2,000 National Guard, plus more than 15,000 Customs, Customs and Border Patrol agents? I certainly don't think so. What we need mm -hmm. is smart border security, and we need to invest more at the border with new technologies, observation towers, drones, uh, some physical barriers for sure, and uh, make that part of a compromise to provide a path to citizenship for dreamers in our country and do all sorts of other things that uh, large majorities of Americans support. And in my view, that's what the president, and not just the president, but everyone uh, running for office uh, these days should be doing, trying to show how we can actually make progress on some of these big issues that have divide, been dividing our country for so long. Mm -hmm. We're talking about immigration here. George W. Bush kicked off the uh, modern day conversation about immigration reform 13 years ago. Yeah. And the political system has yielded nothing since. That's why people are so angry. That's why people are so frustrated. And those of us who yeah. want to lead have to start showing how we're actually going to make progress on these issues rather than using these issues to divide the country for the benefit of politicians. Congressman Corbello, thanks for taking the time this morning. Thank you, Jim. You all have a good day. Uh, that was fascinating. Fewer rallies, more mm -hmm. dialogue. And I don't know who's going to win elections, but we all lose if we don't get well, to a better place. Well, he said outright as a Republican, he said he hopes that this strategy of fear fails, which is a right. remarkable thing for someone and to say. And in such a tight race for him, too. Absolutely.